question so far? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. Can it also be used to have a China clay? I have clay in the house from the way back that's um, stoneware clay that comes in a part of, you know, a box of clay. Is that as usable? That's good for the slab. For the slab. Yeah, for the oh, color. The right. right. So the slab is stoneware, but this is better to use the China oh, yes. It's a different consistency. Yes, yes. Let me finish that description. Um, Permanent pigments are the pigments that you buy in the paint store. When you go and get a can of white paint and you want blue, uh -huh. they pump a little blue in. That's what I'm using. That's the permanent pigment. Um, they're sold in an art store, um, for example, by Akua, A-K-U-A, which is a really good non-toxic colorant. Um, this is from the paint store from, I guess, <coughs> they're liquid. They're liquid. Yeah. But I buy the liquid. They're not you, can, you can get powder. But I'm, I'm aware of the toxicity, so I don't really want to breathe the powder. So I buy the liquid because I feel like it's a little bit safer. Um, comes in tubes. You can buy it in Home Depot. You can buy it in Lowe's. Um, you can buy it in any paint store. Um, when your palette is mixed, the slips are applied to a slab, one over the other, thus building a design with various images, colors, and textures. Each layer is dry, inlaid, to keep the slab platographic or smooth. So every time I layer something, I will show you how I will take my um, pizza roller, which is my main tool, and inlay it to make it smooth so it'll print nicely. So it's a really low-tech kind of process. The materials are all relatively inexpensive and readily available. And it's really exciting. So once the slab is... Do you have a question back there? I don't know what to do. I'll try. Welcome. Uh, once a slab is made planographic, it is moistened slightly, and a dampened piece of paper ca or canvas is placed over the design. So the paper, you can use printmaking paper, or what I'm using is remade. So it's, it's manufactured by DuPont, and it's an archival substrate, and it's the same substance that's used in air conditioner filters, Tea bags in a lighter weight. People use it for um, lampshades. It's. If you, I, I'll pass it around. Just don't bend it because then it takes the bend. But yeah, it's called Remade. R -E, it's on my sheet. R E E M A Y. And that it's down at the bottom. Esca Remade 2470. Or you can print on printmaking paper, but you get a different kind of quality on paper. It comes out much lighter. The vivid, vivid quality you get is from the um, remake. Then, um, the dampened piece of paper or canvas is placed over the design. A hand pulled print is achieved by applying pressure over the surface with a wooden rolling pin. I'm going to show you this later, but I'm just explaining it now so you'll be clear what we're doing. You put the remake down, and then you roll with this rolling pin, and it lifts the color. And when it lifts the color, there's some sort of an electromagnetic charge. I don't know what it is because I'm not a chemist that forms between the reme and the color. And I can run the, re I can run the print under water right after I do it. I'll, I'll do it for you, I'll demonstrate. And it won't come off. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a water, I mean, this is water-based. Yes? When um, you roll um, your color, the edge of the roller, does that mark the design at all? That's why you get it planographic. So you, um, you roll it out so it is flat. And when you put it down, you'll see it just lifts. And you keep peeking to see what you've lifted. And then I finish with a, with, uh, with a spoon. I rub with a spoon. You'll see that whole process. Um, um, so the thin layers of colored clay come up onto the substrate. Because china clay is inert and the pigments used are permanent and stable, the colored clays remain intact. So just quickly glance down at the uh, definitions. You know, the china clay is the uh, kaolin. It's the main ingredient for making porcelain. That's for the colorant. It's also used in the manufacture of other materials such as paper, pastels, and toothpaste. It's also in kaopectate. <laughs> um, the pigments are finely divided substance which imparts its color effect to another material. The pigments remain suspended and do not dissolve like dyes. So the pigments just become part of the um, kaolin. Stoneware uh, clay, go ahead. Um, I want to interrupt you right there with the pigments. Um, if you use a dry pigment, which I still have, you can have as a college. That's fine. Um, do you need a binder? 
No, you don't want a binder. In fact, you can use temper paint. When I work with kids, I'll use temper paint as a colorant because it's non-toxic and it's cheap. This stuff is expensive. Mm -hmm. And you want the one that doesn't have a binder, so the cheaper the temper paint, the better it is because you don't want a binder. A binder will interfere. Okay. <laughs> Stoneware clay, high firing clay, works best for the original slab because it has an open and porous body. Raku clay would be suitable to use as well. And I must add that I'm indebted to my teacher, award-winning clay artist Mitch Lyons, uh, for teaching me this process. And I'm working with him this weekend. We're doing a workshop together in Princeton. Um, since 1968, he has been pioneering his image making from a slab of clay. His work and his teaching continue to inspire me. He's really an amazing man. Uh, this video um, that he has is really worthwhile if you want to get into this. It's $40, but it's well worth the money, and you can get together, and a bunch of people can buy it and share it. So it's really... Um... Anybody have any questions so far? Put this aside. Put this aside. And if you want to pick up a brochure about the workshop we're doing this weekend, I'll leave it over here. Yes. Could low fire stone or clay be used? That's what I have. So I, I think you can. To roll that slip. I think I use yes. low fire when I do uh, okay. kids in school. So you're not firing the clay. You're not firing. He okay. does. Wait. Just Mitch, when he's finished with a, um, a clay monoprint, he will take the clay then and roll it around a, a tube or make something out of it and fire it. Now, some of the color will disappear unless you're using. Um, you know, iron oxide or black oxide or any of the um, more traditional um, clay colorants. But he, he used, I, don't, I don't fire my clay. I just keep adding to the slab. And you can work figuratively, you know, impressionistically, but, or you can work abstractly. Um, I'm going to demonstrate, I was going to just show you this one. This was one I had in process, and what I did here was I drew this face on a piece of newsprint and then transferred it onto the slab. Now do you want me to do you want me to print this one first and then demonstrate adding yeah. some more textures yeah. or yeah? Okay. I'll print this one first. Okay. So what you do when you're printing is you first wet the slab. Okay. And then I'm going to take a piece of Rime. Before I do that, though, I better wash my hands. Okay. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> the slab damp, or is it bone dry? No, I keep that damp. And I keep okay. a wet piece of newsprint over it with a plastic bag. Okay. And then I use it. Okay. I keep it damp. Okay. So now I'm going to take a piece of Rime. The colors are so intense. When you're actually missing it with a grayish clay, doesn't that mute the color? No, for some reason, I mean, you, I, you, if you add enough pigment, the colors remain very intense. So, um, and what happens when you print? It not only lifts the top layer, but you pick up from underneath, and it's always a surprise. I mean, you don't know exactly what you're going to get until you print it. So, excuse Go me, ahead. sorry. Mm -hmm. um, you use, again, a common substance. What, everybody know what this is? Oh, yeah. Tape. <laughs> it's drywall tape. And this gets used to block off the edges. So I spray this four times. And then this goes down here. And I want to stay on the um, clay body, not, on, not just on the wood, because it doesn't stick as well on the wood. Can you see from where you are? Oh, is this a mirror? Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay, good. This. Priscilla, while you're doing that, I wanted to ask you, you said you use um, um, cheap um, tempera. tempera. Mm -hmm. A lot of, lots of times when, when I was teaching and I used the cheap temp tempera with the kids, mm -hmm. the color um, was so transparent, there was no intensity to the color. Mm -hmm. So, oh, but yours have a great deal of intensity. Most of mine are not done with tempera. Most, yeah, most of mine, mine are done with um, uh, permanent um, pigments. Um, but I, I've done it with kids with tempera, and it, it works. I mean, it really works. Some of the um, some of the tempera that's really good is like the Rich Art and this. Um, what is this one? This one. Um, Utrecht. Um, so I'm taping off my edges. Whoops. 
I would have been one of these kids who would have been diagnosed with ADD had I been alive at the time of the... <laughs> I so understood the poor kids who, who had ADD because I am so distractible. So, okay. So now I want to make sure this is down. Now I'm going to take a piece of relay, and I print on the rounded side because I want it to lie flat. Oh, I actually have a few of Mitch's works here. He was selling off in the studio some scraps that he didn't want anymore. <laughs> I bought these. He like took sections of the ones that he wasn't so fond of anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Stencils. I do. I'm going to show you how tons of stencils. I love the stencils. Yeah, I use stencils a lot. So the clay slab is just sitting on the wooden board at this point. Mm -hmm. It can move around actually then, right? Say that again? It's just sitting on the board so it can actually move around on the board right now. It's not attached no, it's, anyway. it's got molding around the sides. It's, 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 it's held fitting in inside, inside the mold. It's inside the mold. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's inside the frame. It's inside the frame. Ah. Yeah. In fact, you can also work, I brought this to show you, you can also work on a cafeteria tray if you don't want to get, do a molding, if you don't want to bother with a molding. I put that away because that one had a damage in it. So I'm spraying that in the air, and I'm going to position it right down here. And then I'm going to start rolling. And lo and behold, little by little, Anybody want to come up and take a turn rolling? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. yeah. We're all done. <laughs> yeah, I want, you, I want you to all paint on the slab after, too. Wow. So it's beginning to happen. Look, see? Oh, I see. It's beginning yeah. to come off. So you want to take a turn here. Just don't, you don't press too hard. You just roll it gently across steady. the surface. Yeah. yeah, steady across the top. There you go. Perfect. It's really good exercise, too. <laughs> oh, love, love. What were you going to ask? When was the last time you put color on this lab? Um, I worked on this the week, not last weekend, but the weekend before. And so it was staying? Oh, say I have slabs that I, I did a year ago, and I keep them wet, because if you if you dry it, you let it dry, you can get it back, but it cracks. So you gotta you got to really moisten it and get it very... Um, Somebody? Anybody else want to? Oh, I want to get a closer look. I'll do it okay. Okay. <laughs> well, how many prints can you get off of that? Look what's happening, see? Let's see. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, that is marvelous. <laughs> Go ahead. So is, is pressure necessary? It's just a matter no, of contact? No, it's all. You don't need to put that. Should, should the color right. be coming seeping through? No, it shouldn't. You don't want it to be too no bad. No seeping through. something that apparently is used for porcelain. Okay. So yeah, that the, the the stuff that's the colorant that I put the um, pigments into is porcelain uh, clay. It's kaolin or Georgia kaolin. clay, but the stuff that the slab is made out of is stoneware. Okay. Okay. Can you use, can you use a rubber um, printing roller? I don't know. You know, the I only use the, I, you can also use you know the clay one, the clay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Come here. Yes. Good. Go. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, right. Why not? <laughs> I have a question. Yes. If you keep that wet, how many paintings, how many monograms can you take? Oh my God. I my habit is to layer and layer and layer and then print and print and print. I mean you can you can get a thirty monoprints of them. Why are they called monoprints? Because each one's different. Each one's I, none, one. none of them is going to be the same. Well, the because same you're taking color. what's on top with right? some yes. stuff from underneath, yes. but each one is different. Oh. Sometimes they'll resemble each other if you put enough pigment on. You might get two that are kind of similar, but they're not the same. But the so pattern's the like, same. Like a print. Yeah, like it's a print. Right, print. Right. right. It's like a monograph. Right. 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 So it's it's made on a red clay. So you do your initial color. You have a picture color. Oh, yeah. yeah. Peel a peel print. How many prints could so you use? So you'll have the other layer of the first original picture in there. Depends on how many layers you have. So how many layers I put color onto. Like, I'm going to... I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that. Thank you. Thank you. I like all this stuff. So this is like actually when you're doing a print. Yeah, I'm pulling a print. print. I'm right. doing it backwards. I'm right. pulling a print because so I can't. that's what you do when you're printing. Yeah. You go right. backwards, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, at what point does the paint get too thick for the clay itself? Never. I mean, yeah. Mitch has a slab. He's been using it for 40 years. He has a slab where he keeps layering. He keeps putting. Never. I mean, it, and then you keep pounding it. You keep, um, 
you keep rolling it down so it, it, it gets flat again. I'm seeing this is starting to crack. See? Doesn't the old layers of clay start cracking underneath the new layers of stuff? No. Uh -huh. yeah. You're just well, building it, it up. I keep it under wet newsprint. I mean, I under keep it in a plastic newsprint. bag under wet newsprint. For four years. Four years. Oh. So it never, it, 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 one, one of them I had, I tipped it on its side, or someone tipped it on its side, right. and it cracked and it, oh. and it broke apart. Um, but that's rare. If you keep it wet, there's no reason for it to crack well, apart. You, you make it in May, you're away for a month. Just leave it in wet, in a bag. In fact, if you're away for a month, you don't want to use newsprint, you want to use a wet towel. Okay. Take a wet towel, wet it, put it in a plastic bag, it'll be fine. You can do it for two months. Wow. Okay, that's nice. And does it, the towel gets full of paint. Once in a while, sometimes, <laughs> I, I've had occasion where the towel got moldy, but my slab never got moldy. How do you know how much paint to put on the slab when you're starting? You just keep layering. It's such an un it's it's such a forgiving process that you know it, <laughs> you can put a lot. If you put a little, you get a thinner image. But you always have to keep that wet. Yes. Wow. Okay. Ooh, what's that white? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if I have some paper there. Sometimes the newsprint. Um, yeah, you do. I have paper, right? Do you yeah. see it? Where do you see it? Right here. Is that paper? That's paper. Right here. Oh. Okay, I was peeling it off before, but I didn't. See? Okay, you look, thank you. Let me get that, um, that wire. There you go. Yeah. You're going to scrape it off. Now, how can you tell whether you need to add more paint or dye? Oh, so beautiful, isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, the colors are wonderful. Yeah. So much fun. Okay, okay that's, that's all right. It'll be all right. Yeah. But it is, it's, what you're doing is scraping the pa paper off. How do you know when you need to add more colors? How do you know when you need to add more color? You need water over Yeah, any kind of a tray that has sides and that you can get this much clay in there. This tray that is nice. But then you could tape it off with a sharp edge, just make it smaller. In other words, you could just come in from it yeah, when you print. And then you can also print smaller. So if you wanted to take masking tape or um, the uh, drywall tape, you can make smaller pieces. I've done that too. too yeah, blue tape is fine. Is it Somebody told me recently about green tape. That that's yeah, really good. Really? Is it called frog tape? Yeah. 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 And the kind of things that happen here, you can't get, even with painting. I mean, I've tried. It, you really can't. Um, oh, wow. And I pushed it down to get the circles. Did you ever try a wooden spoon? No. That's interesting. It's true. We used to print with a little bit bigger. We used to print with wooden spoons when I was. Um, yeah. Now, if you want to do words on it, it comes out uh, negative as a print. Right? Say it again. Let's say you want to write the word words. Oh, on you here. write the word on newsprint. Prints it on here, and then, you, it here, on and then here, you have the And then when you print, it, it prints. Right. Right, I right. figured that one out. Yeah. I did a few. <laughs> I love words. I love words. In the I love words. Too. And has a nice graphic quality. Yeah, if you look on my website, I just recently did some with letters. Do you? Just very recently, but I don't have it back yet. When it's what you do. I was going to bring it to you. You're doing workshop again. Workshop.